Guys, welcome back to this week's episode of Unleash Your Inner Greatness. And on this week's episode, I welcome George Hood, who is a former U.S. Marine and Special Agent with the U.S. Naval Criminal Investigation Service and more widely known for his Guinness World Record for the longest abdominal plank. It was an extraordinary effort over eight hours, 15 minutes, and I'm super excited to introduce you to the show, George. Welcome to Unleash Your Inner Greatness. Thank you, Joseph. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. I'm really pumped for this episode. It's, uh, it's one that's meaningful, meaningful to me in, in type of a way. So I wanted to just start and just ask what you're most grateful for in your life right now. Ha, huh. you know, um, I preach a lot about gratitude and I, and when I look at myself, I'm grateful that I have three sons who are following in my footsteps career wise and, 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 and otherwise, um, that they're healthy and that they, they respect what I do and what I have done. And, um, I'm just grateful. I have those three boys that no matter what else happens, I'll always have them. I'll always be their dad. And, um, and the legacy of their father will always be there for them to reflect on long after I'm gone. Wow. That's, that's awesome. And how, how has being a dad sort of, um, what have you learned from being a dad? Three boys, that's a bit of a, you know, it's an energetic I don't, you know, challenge. I've I, I probably made some mistakes along the way. They had a terrific mother, uh, uh, you know, that, that, and, and she was certainly a, a contributor to their success now. Uh, but, uh, you know, um, time is precious. You know, you only get once in a lifetime moments with the, with the boys. And I've watched them grow up and um, they are, two of them were Marines. Uh, they're all in, all in federal law enforcement now. Um, and they're all into wanting to look like me and, and train like me. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, you know. it, it's, um, it, it rubs off, right? We're so, I mean, parents are so influential as part of their children's journey. So right. I mean, what makes it even harder is, you know, my sons will never talk about this with me. They'll never talk about my events. It's, it's, it's always dumb, stupid, queer, weird, you know, why are you doing that? You know, but the, I hear from their friends that they think it's pretty badass. So, <laughs> so I, 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 I like that and I respect that. And uh, I, I lead by example. I still do my training every day. And my son that's with me now, he's here now uh, for 30 days. And then he goes back to his academy. But uh, uh, he, he watches me do those push-ups now. And he's, he's doing them too. Yeah, he's inspired. I, I was... I, you're on the show because I did the, I set myself a challenge to do the five minute plank challenge last month. And as we we're talking before we started pressing record, I was at four minutes. Uh, I think it was about four minutes, 20, but I, I, I hit a roadblock and I was a bit frustrated. So I, the, the next day I said, okay, I'll, I'll, gi I'll give it a rest today and I'll try again tomorrow. And then I, I, I I wasn't able to do it the next day. So I went online that night. And I was like, right, who, who, who holds a record for this thing? Like maybe he can <laughs> give me some advice. So, but what I want to do is just hand it back to you and just, could you take us back to the humble beginnings, perhaps, you know, where your journey started and just tell the listeners a little bit about like who you are and how you got to where you are today. Sure. I mean, I, I, it's no secret. Uh, I, uh, I'm from the East Coast uh, near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I grew up there, went to college, and uh, got my bachelor's in uh, uh, government and public service, was commissioned as a Marine Corps officer, and that's where my first introduction to physical fitness uh, took place. Um, uh, was on active duty uh, as a young Marine lieutenant out at Camp Pendleton, California. That got me to the West Coast, and um, training and being physically fit is, is a Marine officer leadership trait. And uh, we were trained back in the day at Officer Candidate School by the, uh, the British Royal Marines. They had a partnership with um, our Marine Corps and tremendous mutual respect. And I remember going out every morning in that, in that hot, you know, humid weather and that Royal Marine, that Brit would get up on that, on that stand and lead us all in the calisthenics and the basic exercises that we are all getting back to now, quite frankly. And uh, I remember that. Th I remember that stuff. And, um, so uh, then I got into law enforcement and uh, the physical fitness aspect of that um, as it relates to agent survival and especially in enforcement operations, especially when I was with the, the, the DEA. Um, 
fitness plays a part in that. And um, bad guys like to see fit cops. And uh, they respect that most times. And um, <clears throat> I started getting interested in um, these uh, endurance events. And growing up as a kid, nothing was ever good enough. And uh, I always had to, you know, feel like I had to please my father to some one extent or the other to, to be the best. Um, but uh, I started looking at individual records like cycling and things like that, skipping rope, and uh, wondering how how long can can one do this? And I, I get I'm curious by nature. I'm inquisitive, and uh, that got me started. And I set that first lone record in 1986 in Honolulu, Hawaii, with the, uh, the jump rope, and uh, then I started working, obviously I had my career to worry about. And then uh, it wasn't until about 2006, I got serious about additional world records and uh, ended up setting 13 of them in, uh, in 16 attempts. But uh, bring it forward to the plank, um, that's because that's the longest tenure I've ever had with one particular genre, okay? Um, and uh, I've done so much with the plank. Uh, I've, I've I've, I've set the records, I've set weighted plank records, I've set plank marathon records. I even helped the current female record holder get her world record, her Guinness world record. So I shared that with, with her as well. So there's not much left to do except retire the pose, which I did this past February by doing it the way I started by getting the Guinness world record. Um, it's true, it's no secret. I, I do have the current international world record of 10 hours, 10 minutes and 10 seconds that I set two years ago this month uh, on behalf of the YMCA here in uh, Chicago. But the plank uh, was actually, the, the first Guinness World Record for the plank was actually set in the UK back in uh, the f uh, December of 2000 and, um, 2010. Uh, a gentleman there in the UK, you could, you could look it up. It's, uh, he said it, he, 19 minutes and 58 seconds. He wanted 20 minutes, and that's in the narrative. He wanted 20 minutes, but he just dropped. And he did it outdoors there, somewhere, somewhere in, in London, uh, as I recall. But uh, that stuck with me. And then it, it started to take off. The plank is a fairly new category with, with Guinness World Records. And then in early 2011, um, I tried it. And my first plank was five minutes. I remember shaking and saying, oh my gosh, how can anybody do this, you know? But uh, I committed to training for it, and as well as were other people around the world. And I had a window of opportunity uh, in December of 2011. Um, the Australian had moved the mark to about f uh, 50 minutes and change. And um, I came along six, six months later uh, in December of 2011 and at a, at a restaurant here in Naperville, I set my Guinness World Re first Guinness World Record for the plank at one hour and 20 minutes. Wow. And the adjudicator from Guinness World Records, the judge that was at that attempt to certify it, is also the same judge that was at my second Guinness World Record for the plank in 2013 at 307. And Philip Robertson is his name. And he actually was at this last one we just did. So he has certified all three of my Guinness World Records for the plank. And I've set uh, four or five others, uh, international world records certified elsewhere, but the Guinness World Records are what we're talking about here. And um, so it was really nice to see him again and, uh, and end the journey the way it started with the, the receipt of, of the Guinness World Record for the plank at eight hours, 15 minutes and 15 seconds. Wow, it's so inspiring. I truly believe that the plank is like a metaphor for life. Like it's challenging. Some days you want to give up on it. There's moments of gratification which keep you going that little bit more. Um, during the five minute plank that obviously I did the other month, and, and you could probably attest to this, like your first five minute plank, you know, when you're shaking towards the end of it. Um, I noticed that the biggest challenge for me was mindset. And we spoke about like the cognitive part of the, the challenge. I was just wondering if you could give us some, you know, what's your approach to developing a mindset into, into the lead up of your training and what practical tips can we sort of explore on the call um, to talk about the cognitive part of the challenge? Yeah. I, I realized the cognitive component of the, uh, of the attempt uh, fairly early on in my journey. Um, 
when I start, when I broached the four hour mark, uh, and then, uh, over in China in 2014, um, that's when we started taking on water and stuff and realized that hydration was important, but it was getting into the 515, uh, record of uh, uh, seven, five, five years ago in California. Um, I started to realize that you needed to have a way to flip a switch that you can tune out and put away, uh, bury the agony of what you're, you're going through and just start getting into a journey in your head, um, disassociating yourself from the reality of the clock as you know it and digging deep, planting those roots and like a tree and that no, what, no matter what storm comes by, your tree is going to stand. And um, that those words were reiterated to me quite often during this most recent attempt. Um, I wasn't going to fail. You get tempted sometimes. Sometimes that beast will jump up on your back. And, um, you know, what are you going to do when the messenger of misery visits you? <laughs> okay. Well, I turn up the music because evil things don't like loud music and they will disappear. Um, face it, if somebody's giving you a hard time and you want to tune somebody out, you turn up your music, right? <laughs> They're going to go yep. away. So same, same concept applies being facetious to some extent, but, uh, having the ability to flip that switch and not get distracted, uh, for the wrong reasons and going back and thinking about how it hurts, um, st starting to think about perhaps relationship issues or letting all those other little things that we all deal with every single day. I, I I've dealt with them. Don't let those creep into your, um, uh, your psyche because you, you are showing up, you are executing a world record attempt. So you owe it to yourself to commit all energy and resources that you have within you to that cause. And I, I raise money for charity. So that's what my events are about. So that's what, that's why I'm there. I, that's my role. And nothing will get in the way of that. That takes a very strong mind because the, the mind's always going to try to look for an easy way out to get you to say, no, no, you, you don't need to do this now. It, 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 we can just stop right here. Uh, it's, it's tempting, especially when you're under duress. But you have to have the, that warrior mentality where you, you will survive at all costs. And if you doubt that for a moment, um, may I suggest that you and your listeners go experience uh, some time in Afghanistan with, with my Marine warrior colleagues, and you will see what it's like to stay in the fight as wow. if your life depended on it. Wow, that's a powerful statement. So like practically let's say we're in the plank right george and let's say then you know some voices are coming in saying you know i think it's time for you to drop or you can't you know those negative voices then what what's the can you talk us through some examples of what what the chatter that you respond to it with is there anything that you would say to yourself at that point i start vocalizing and you'll notice beside me, there's usually two cognitive coaches. There's usually two females. One of them has the lead. Uh, in this last case, it was uh, Renee Cobley out of Australia. She actually came here and she had been studying me for a long time before this. She was with me during all my long planks, the workups. She saw the misery I went through because I confided in her. You know, I said, look, I, I just need to do, I just need to break 801. There's no incentive for me whatsoever to go to 10, 10, 10 and break that. I mean, I, I, that's a separate title altogether. But um, she, at the event, when I get under duress, you'll, I'll start mumbling. I'll start vocalizing what I'm, what I'm hearing, how I'm feeling. It gets pretty nasty sometimes. Um, but they, they forgive me for that. And I get very angry sometimes at what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling. And so I hear her calm voice in my ear. Um, and her, she will start talking to me about, um, you know, George, uh, you're, I'll start narrating something and, and she'll tell me how people are reacting and, and that'll give me energy. I feed off of that. And a, a real example of that was when, uh, early on in the attempt, I was having a, some issues and I started to do a narration. I was thanking the band members for being there, the kids. I couldn't see them because they were up in a balcony, a loft. And so I, I, I didn't really see them. So I started to talk to thank them before they all left. Um, and she goes, George, they are crying. They are looking over the railing at you. You, you keep talking. 
When she said that, I got goosebumps. That changed everything. Wow. I started talking. Cause I now, now I know I'm, 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 you see, I trust her, you see. So I knew that that's what was happening. I was inspiring those kids. Even though I couldn't see them, I knew they were there. I felt their presence and I heard them earlier. So, so I mean, so now I, now I'm, I'm, I have a, I have a purpose, right? So I start narrating and that I feed off of that. And she made, she made my day when, when she said that, that, can, that validated the concept that when I speak, it means something and that, people that, are inspired. And that, that was a huge help to me. And then I had them all come downstairs and we did a, a photo moment. I said, get everybody up here. Cause I wanted to memorialize the opportunity, m memorialize that moment, you know, and these kids are so used to just taking selfies, but they, they, they forget about back in the day when you took a picture, it meant something. <laughs> you took a, a group, a group photo. I used to always take group photos when I would travel with the, with the agents and on the job and off the job. You memorialize those special occasions with a picture, you know? And uh, so I wanted to get that picture. Some of those are online. We have, we have some of those, but uh, um, I wanted those kids to have that moment. And then they all got on the bus and left, you know? But uh, hearing Renee's voice or Karen's voice, and the two of them oftentimes would chat amongst each other, you see, and other team hood members that are around that platform. And when I'm in the pose, I hear everything. My hearing is so very acute. I hear everything. And so they're very careful what they say. So they'll start talking, just talk. And I start, I, I eavesdrop. That, that's, a, that's a way for me to get distracted, you see. And sometimes I'll just make stuff up. They've done that before. Just make stuff up. You know, talk about guys, what, the sexy things. These things are going to get my attention, right? When I'm under duress, I like listening to stuff like that, right? And then I chime in as necessary. And then when at times to get, when I need them to get serious with me, they do, and um, and I rely on them to to really truly help me when it really sucks to dig deep and get to the ending line, get to the finish, commit and finish what you said you were going to do, and we 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 did. Wow. So it, for, for, for a listener who's not attempting an eight hour plus, but like just the five minutes, would you recommend that they also put some distractions around them if they're doing the, say the five minute challenge you know, or people, they, they over, uh, overrate the, the, the five minute, six minute, they, they can go outside and, and five minutes will go by like that. Yeah. When you're in a static pose, take that time to look inside yourself. Think about your day. Think about if, if you start your plank in the morning, like I just did before we came on. Um, I spend that first 35 minutes just, just in the pose, watching the TV, no sound, just watching the pictures, and, um, and thinking about you and the, our chat. And, and before you know it, the, the, the clock's gone. It's, it times up. And I'm, and I'm ready to, 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 to be with you. And, and so that, that kind of self-meditation, if, if, if we would – Take the opportunity to use the plank constructively for that time for you and yourself to um, just think about you and, and your time will go by quickly. Stop worrying about five, that five minute plank will be a six minute. It could be a 10 minute plank. You'll never, you'll always surprise yourself. Wow. Always, always. But stop, you know, set a goal. If it's five minutes, you'll get there. But take that time because you're static, you're stuck. Now you gotta, now you gotta think. So think about yourself and what you're doing. And that's, almost, that's very, it's, it's, it's biofeedback. Give your, talk to your body, you know, make it feel good. It works. It's therapeutic. I've been doing, I've been doing it for 12 years. Wow. I, I was going to say, I, 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 I listened to one of your previous interviews and one thing that, I was really um, taken aback by was this comment about this, the energy source in the core. And you said that the energy radiates from the center of the earth um, through, through a, a long period of the challenge. And you mentioned that you can feel it during the, the extended challenge. And you mentioned in 2014 in China, how the crowd reacted. Oh my to, God, it was powerful. So I was just wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about that. Oh, it's very electric. Uh, it's uh, that because you have to believe that you're on that platform. And it was even told to me when I was on the spin bike back in the day, um, that, that energy, we, 
we are surrounded by this energy, this core, the, even the, the earth has a core. Um, this universe has a core, it's called the sun. And um, uh, you know, we feed off of that and that, that energy has to go somewhere. So it comes up through my platform and it, it'll fill my body. I tap into that cognitively. And when people are close, they feel it. They, they will get goosebumps. They, they will. I had people in China were just mesmerized by this process. And um, if you believe in that core concept, coming up through your body has a core. We often ignore it, but it, ha it has a core as well. Even an apple that you might enjoy every single day has a core. And before you throw that, that core out into the trash, you're going to reflect on how, how beautiful and how, how tasty that apple was. But it got there, it, it was that way because of its core. Well, you can be the same way. You can be that powerful tree. Whatever mantra you want to put in your head, um, you can be that. But it's all on your core. And when, when there's an exchange that I go through on the platform, with the crowd. I need a crowd. I need people. I cannot do a plank like that of that duration uh, in a vacuum. I just, you can't. I just can't. I need to feed off of the music, the electricity that's generated uh, with, the, with the people that are watching and seeing how they're reacting and they're inspiring. Uh, you, you equate it to uh, back in the day, you know, going to a rock concert. You know, those, you know, ACDC would pack a stadium. I watched the video yesterday. Um, on YouTube again, just 14 minutes long. And they just pack a, a pack a stadium with hundreds of thousands of people. And all they're doing, they roll their, their trucks in there, they put all their equipment on the stage and they start jamming away. And the people, the crowd goes crazy. Well, I, I try to replicate that with my, my attempts. My music is very loud. It's very good. I'm known for my playlist. <laughs> I am. And, and that, 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 that electric music energizes me on that platform and it energizes the crowd just like a rock concert. Wow. And I can assure you that on February 15th, at least for eight hours, 15 minutes and 15 seconds, I was the greatest rock concert in Chicago. <laughs> I betcha. That's awesome. I love that story. It's so cool. It's a fantasy. I mean, and that, that when I'm on the platform and I'm visualizing that, with the crowd and, and when I see them react to my music, it's just like those kids reacting to my speech. You know, I, now I can see the crowd. So I can see that they'll say, where'd you get that? And they start, they start jamming. So now it's going back and forth. And I know I'm, I'm feeding them and they're feeding me. And that's a beautiful thing. Now everybody's in it together. It's just like being at a rock concert. It's no different. And you walk out of the concert saying, man, that was fantastic. Look at him. That then, and it's so true. And I think that's why I think the plank is a metaphor for life. It's a beautiful yeah. synchronicity. It's a beautiful orchestra. I was going to say, um, like, like I'm reaching out to you because I started the plank and you know, I've got a story as to why I started it, but I was going to say out of, has, has, have you had many people reach out and share some in inspiring stories about why they're doing the plank? Like what's the most inspirational story that you've had from someone who's reached out. Yes, I get, I get a lot of messages all the time on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and I try to engage with as many as I possibly can. Um, and um, and that, that's important to me because there's somebody out there that took the time to send me a message. And if it's a, if it's a message that with substance, it says, you know, not just hi, but if it's a message that says, you know, uh, you truly inspired me, I'll reach back out and thank them for those, those kind words. But um, I have people have sent me their, uh, their stories. I uh, had one, one young lady who's, I might have this, I have to pull the message up again. I actually saved it. It was a great testimonial, but how I changed her life because her husband has uh, PTSD uh, issues. Uh, they all had, they had some issues they were dealing with. And because of the plank and what she witnessed me doing has truly inspired and healed both of them. Um, people can't make this stuff up. Yeah. They, especially when they write it down and they memorialize it, that's therapeutic for them. And I, I get to read it and I consider that a gift. Um, 
and the fact that I was able to, to, to deliver that to them, I didn't, I didn't even know them. Um, I affect a lot of people like that around the world. And uh, when they're kind enough to, to, to let me know that, I don't take those gifts for granted. Um, it's, a, it's a magical world we live in. And we're all connected one way or the other. It's just how much do you want to you know, facilitate that extension or that, that, that communication with people. Um, and I just try to do the best I can with what resources I have. Um, and then when I go to speak and do, do, do lectures and stuff like that, uh, which seems to be pretty prevalent now, they want to hear my story. I'm 62 years old. You know, I got, uh, you know, about 37 years, six months, three days left to get to a hundred, you know, and, um, you know, I want to get to a hundred and, uh, with as little hassle as possible. And, um, so I'm enjoying life at the moment and, and continuing to spread the good word and uh, having opportunities like this and, and knowing that you're helping people is a really good thing. And it's, it's inspiring. It really is. It inspires me. It really does. It, it's cool. And, uh, you know, I, I, I definitely know after people listen to this and we challenge them to the plank, it, there's just something that tweaks. It's really special. So I'm really grateful that you, that, that, that you mentioned that. Um, I, I was, uh, in terms of mentors, uh, like I fund, I fundamentally believe that it's integral to grow through a mentor and in that it enables accountability. I was just wondering, like in your life, who's been your biggest mentor and what's the biggest thing that they've taught you? You know, I had, um, I thought I get asked that a lot and uh, I had to really think about it. Um, and there were people as I was growing up through college, uh, in school and watching people at the gym, watching how they trained, um, uh, training un unselfishly um, and, and doing it healthy and correct. And, and a lot of that was just stimulation for me. I just, I would watch. And I, was, I was pretty shy back in high school and college, very shy. I was, I'm a late bloomer. But uh, the, um, I know who those people are and I, I'm, still, I'm in touch with them now and I've actually shared with them what they've done for me. Um, and they never knew. But it's that silent example uh, that I respect. And um, I got it from people, uh, I had uh, people that ran the social fraternity that I was a part of, um, gave me opportunities to always speak and, and, and be on my own and take responsibility for things, uh, having special parts and programs where I could express and, and recite from memory. I was in a couple musicals at school. Um, I played, I was Charlie Brown in the musical, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. And uh, you know, um, things like that just uh, just kind of kept, kept me in the game. Um, but I, I, several people along the way, there were good people. I had some bosses that were horrible, but I had some great bosses. And those are the ones that are in touch with me today on LinkedIn and so forth, you know, um, on the professional side of the house. So, so I've had my share of mentors, I, but there's no one movie star that uh, – um, I, I look up to, uh, I suppose if I thought about it again today, I could come up with a, a name or two good actors who I always respected in the roles they played. Um, but, uh, you know, for the most part, yeah, there, there's always going to be somebody that's going to facilitate your success. And it's the extent to which you remember that and are thankful for that. Cause you don't, you don't do this crap on your own. You're always going to be, somebody's going to be there with, to, with your back. And, um, you have to really believe that. It's a team effort and teamhood is what we, we do. We promote, they, they all came in for this to see me do this thing. And I'm grateful for that. And they, they, they could have done a hundred other things besides fly to Chicago in the middle of winter and come watch me do this plank. Many of them have event experience. They've been with me before, but um, it was just, I, I don't take those things for granted. I was truly grateful for, for them, for Renee to come all the way from Australia you know, she, she's a very important person. Okay? Yeah. And for her and her husband and, 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 and Samira, their, their daughter, to, to come and show up, that tells me a lot. And we need more real people like that, you know. But uh, you don't do this alone. It's a collaborative effort. Um, and, um, and now that I'm not planking and, and pursuing another world record yet, the uh, – the opportunities I have now are because people are aware of what I've done. You reached out to me and so is everybody else. 
you know? Um, so it's nice. I want to just continue to spread the good word. Because then anybody can do this. This is this is all possible. And it does, it did take you a bit of time. Like I know you said that it took you seven years to go from five minutes to the to the record. Yeah. So time's a beautiful thing as well. And like it is like we've it's pretty short. We've got, only got a finite amount of time. And I, if, left, if you were uh, if you did not have gratitude, if you were not cognizant of the fact that the gifts you've been blessed with will always be to facilitate and serve the greater good whatever that might be we sometimes we just don't know but you got to believe in that higher power that whatever that is to you or anybody else that there's more to you than just you and if you use your talents correctly and you're out there and you're serving that greater good you're helping people you're you're raising money for charity you're inspiring people um you will continue to have success and I truly believe you reap what you sow, but you have to be patient. And I'm still planting seeds and um, I'm still sowing. And uh, I just know that uh, I don't worry about it so much anymore. I'm good. I really am. I'm retired. I have a nice place. You know, my boys are healthy, you know, and I get to have, you know, conversations with people like you who I would never have met before had I not done this really spectacular, officially amazing thing. <laughs> yeah, of course. And it's a cascade because obviously all the listeners will then pass it on and, and perhaps even, you know, transform a part of their life or their physique or their, their fitness. So yeah. it's, um, yeah. and then their children will, will look at them and it's a, it's a beautiful circle of life. So thanks, George. It, truly, it is a circle of life that you have to pay attention to and, and, and think about because it's uh, it's really important our kids watch us not just our kids but young people watch us every single move we make yeah. and you always have to remember that you are a walking example every single day to so many people mm. um thanks george i i just to reiterate uh, like what you said um you know even through inspiring you know, in your own journey, you can then inspire others. So you never know, even, even if your gift is something really small, like, uh, you, you never know who you're going to affect. So it's, um, it's, it's amazing. Thanks for the feedback. I was going to, um, you touched on legacy a little bit, but I wanted to just uh, ask you what, like, what is your legacy? You know, how would you like to be remembered? Uh, George, George, um, um, time's up. I'm, I am my generation's next Jack LaLanne. Okay. Jack LaLanne was a really famous fitness guy back in the 60s here in the United States anyway. Uh, you may have heard of him, but he, I think he has passed now. He's, he's died. Um, but uh, I remember seeing him on the black and white TV, you know, and he just, he just was always fit, was always doing something, you know. And um, I've been doing this for 12, 15 years now and um, setting one world, world record after the other. And I've had my share of failures as well. Uh, 15 attempts. I've been success six. What if 16 attempts successful on 13? Um, you know, uh, but uh, and I've learned. But I've learned from those instances where we weren't successful. And that's a subject for another day. But um, you know, it's uh, it's 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 all good. And I just know that uh, the legacy is such that George Hood. That's that's the plank guy. You know. Uh, yeah, he was always setting world records one after the yeah. So that's probably how I'm going to be remembered. They won't re they won't remember that I'm a DEA agent or an NCIS agent or, and they may remember I was a former Marine, but that was only for a couple of years. So but they're going to remember me as a blank guy, you know, <laughs> and that's okay. Uh, I think Guinness World Records has tremendous respect for that, and uh, I enjoy working with them now. Uh, at 62 years of age, very few people like me come along to do this kind of stuff. Wow. But there will be there will be another event and you can stay tuned. Your listeners can stay tuned, but, uh, I have, there will not be another plank world record attempt. Yeah. But I'm really intrigued by the push up. Genre. I was going to ask. Oh yeah. Cause you mentioned that the push up it's more crazy. I, I, I'm, I'm into that now. Like I was with the plank and it's addicting and, uh, I'm knocking them out. You know, uh, I'm averaging what 10, 10,000 pushups a week. Uh, 2000 a day, you know, plus in, in, in 
high volume, you know, and short sets. Um, and I'm, I'm, my body is conditioned now. It, it's, it's really working up to the, that plank record. And I have tremendous core success with the plank that the other people that have set that push up record that I'm looking at, they don't have. So I'm, I'm anxious to see how my success with the plank is going to impact my success with the push up record. What, what's the current record that you're trying to break? Or that you uh, the mo most Guinness has the Guinness World Records has several uh, push-up records, but the one I'm looking at is uh, the most push-ups in one hour. And um, current record is uh, 2,806, set by a gentleman over in Australia. And I've looked at his tape, and uh, he set it in 2018 or 2019. I can't remember, but uh, I'm training now. And when it, when it's time, <laughs> the world will know and it will be, it will be outrageous. Uh, and so far so good. I'm very blessed. Very, very, uh, I'm, I'm healthy. I'm, um, I'm enjoying it. And, uh, it's just every day showing up, getting up, getting on the platform, training every single day. You, you just got to commit to that. I, I, there's no distractions. I have no social life to speak of. I'm still very single. I just, I have my, my hound here my dog, you know, this is, this is the proverbial hound. You see, <laughs> this, this little guy has seen more world record attempts, more training sessions than any other hound on the planet. Right. Very cute. I mean, and he never, he never complains. He never, never bitches, never says, a, never says anything. Just quiet. <laughs> best companion one could have. Yeah. Yeah. Best part. And loyal is all hell. Unconditional. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, keep us in the loop. You know, we'll uh, we'll have to do episode number two down the yeah. track. There's a lot more we could discuss. Oh, but, sure. Um, I, I've got three rapid fire questions for you, and then one last question, uh, if that's all right. Okay. All right. So the first rapid fire question is: is what can people do to live a happier life? Have the right attitude when you get up in the morning, and don't let don't don't let anybody upset that. Your, your happiness is your responsibility. Awesome. So right attitude and don't let anyone disrupt it. I love that. Um, what can people do to live a more purposeful life? Have a goal. When you wake up in the morning, believe in something that you can accomplish. Awesome. Have a goal. Believe you can accomplish it. And then what can, what, what can people do to live a regret-free life, George? Choose your friends carefully. Wow, that yeah. one's powerful. Yeah, choose your friends carefully and uh, don't be tempted by the, 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 the evil that lurks out there. Uh, stay true to who you are and what, what, what we were put on this earth uh, for in the first place. Thanks for that. That's a big takeaway. Um, my last question is this. I've, I've loved the interview and I definitely want to get you back on the show. Um, my last question is, George, if today was your last day and I gave you a piece of paper and a pen and you had one thing that you could write down to inspire future generations to believe in themselves, to believe in their inner greatness. What's the one thing that you would write on the piece of paper? Try. Make, make the effort. Misery loves company. Uh, think positive and at least try what you think you might want to do. Amazing. I, I put PS, I love you, Christopher, Brandon, and Andrew. Wow, that's so cool. That's awesome. Good stuff, George. That's a beautiful touch to uh, end the interview. I was going to say, have you written any books that we could put in the show notes? Um, uh, I'm, I'm working on that. Okay. Uh, I, there's, there's demand for that. Um, uh, also, there's a movie they talked about. A movie. It, it's suitable for a, a movie. Yep. Uh, so there's a lot of lot of opportunities I have to pursue, um, but uh, I, I take one day at a time. And uh, yeah. those things that are meant to happen will indeed happen, and that includes setting world records. They will. Um, at such time that you do write the book, let me let us know, and we'll, we'll link that up um, in, the show, that. in, in the show. I'll do that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. we can we can uh you know do a giveaway for you as well yeah but for the for the tribe so um that's it i'm really i just want to acknowledge you um i to be honest the reason why i 
uh, achieved the five minute plank and it's not big in the world the great scheme of things but for me it was an amazing achievement i listened to you on an episode and you talked about visualizing yourself as a tree yeah so i just wanted to acknowledge you for that thank you so much because that got me through the challenge um yeah, and you are you know, a tree You're very strong and strong trees can stand withstand a lot yeah and that was going through my head. So I'd recommend everyone uh, do the, you know, do a plank. Uh, 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 lastly, just before we go, George, if they were to, I know you've got a Facebook group as well. It's the plank. The, pl the plank training club. My, my colleague, uh, Angie Eng Engstrom, I, I turned that over to her. Okay. Uh, she runs that now. And uh, I encourage people to go sign up with that. It's, it's the one online resource that the, uh, has some credibility and, uh, and she works with a lot of people around the world. She's, she's good people. Uh, they can connect with her direct on that. Um, anybody that's interested in what I'm doing, um, uh, they, uh, I'm using Instagram as the social media platform of choice at the moment. Uh, they can connect with me there at, uh, at Instagram. They'll find me hood four, six, six, three. Yeah. Uh, and they can follow me there. That's awesome. I just wanted to acknowledge you again. I really, really appreciate and respect your time. Thank you so much for inspiring me um, to delve into the world of planking. I'm going to, uh, I usually meditate before I come on and do a, an episode with my guests, but I actually plank before I come on with you. So, <laughs> I, I, did, I did the same thing. Yeah, so. it, was, uh, it was amazing. So. And when I go out this afternoon, this morning here to go run, as gray as the skies are right now, I'm going to reflect on this conversation and I'll be thinking about you long after we disconnect here. And, um, and I can assure you, Joseph, it'll put a smile on my face. And that's that's me, me too. And, uh, I've been getting back into gratitude, writing gratitude. So I'll, I'll tag you in cause I've started to tag in people who I'm grateful for during the day. So yeah, it means a lot. I really appreciate it. Good luck with the new challenge, the new push up challenge. Thanks, brother. You let me know. Let me know when you get this thing uh, ready to air, and I'll, I'll share it. And uh, we'll let people. This is a good one. I felt good about this one, and we'll let people uh, hear the good word. I really appreciate it. Thanks again. All right, my friend. Take All care. Right. Thanks for coming on the show. Cheers, George. All right.